Welcome to Munda Makeover. We have traveled all over Zambia to find hard-working farmers. We want to share their success stories. And where there are challenges, we will bring experts to help them gain the extra knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields. And increase their income. We will see how farmers from across the country can benefit from our experts' advice. While also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they improve their farms. On Munda Makeover! Cozy, yeah. uh -huh. ever wondered what's the secret to farming? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Hard work, mm -hmm. good planning, mm -hmm. quality inputs, yes. markets. Exactly, Cozy. There is no one secret, there is many. Mm. That's why this week at Tanana, we're looking at four very different skills. And seeing how all together they add up to make one thing. The secret of farming. Let's go find out. This week we're in Shipamwala in Central Province. And we're visiting Michael Mainga. Michael is married to Catherine and they have seven children. Their farm covers 15 hectares. Hello. Hello. Hello thank you. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. How are you? Very well, thank you. Sure. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So, uh, what challenges are you facing that perhaps if we deal with them, you can do better. I want to venture into serious uh, poultry. Of course, I'm already doing crop production, but right. I want to improve on productivity. Okay. How to manage the crop, okay. mm. the fertilization part of right. it, right. and so on, yes. Okay. Mm. We are going to go off now, get those specialists, and come back with some very useful information for you. Oh, thank you so very right, much. Then. I'm really looking forward to we'll that. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I enjoy farming myself. Maybe the prices, the selling, the do not go well. I will still uh, reinvest. Uh, I like to see, uh, especially the crops grow. I just enjoy it. It's a very good source of, uh, of livelihood. The first skill we're looking at today is how to keep chickens. But what kind of chickens? And how do you keep them healthy? Michael already keeps village chickens, but he wants to expand and become a commercial chicken farmer. So we've invited Luca Mzmara from Hybrid Poultry Farm to tell us all about it. When it comes to the three different types of chickens, could you please help us understand or outline the differences in the three types of farming and what the advantages may be of one compared to the other? We start with the, the, the first one, which will be the, the, the ones for eggs. Okay. It could be a commercial layer. You're talking of about waiting about uh, 17, 18 weeks before it starts uh, dropping eggs. Right. And those are mostly table eggs. Right. Yeah. And then uh, the uh, broiler. Broiler mm. is what we call mean management. You're talking of six weeks or 1,008 hours the chicken is ready for the right. market. Right. And then uh, extending further onto the meat is the village chicken type, mm. which is a hardy bed as compared to the broiler. And right. maybe, it, yes, it takes a bit longer to grow. Maybe you're talking of 14 weeks, 13-14 right. weeks as compared to a broiler. Right. But when you're looking for meat, it's either the broiler or the improved village chicken for meat. So Mr. Mangan, are you thinking of continuing with village chicken? Are you thinking of going into layers or maybe you're considering broilers? I'm thinking of continuing with village chicken. Okay, fantastic. Yes. So yes. I'd like to dig in for a little bit more detail on, you know, a clear comparison between a local village chicken compared to the hybrid uh, I'm sure uh, if you look at um, the local breed that uh, we, we, we've seen around the farm today, uh, that will take like over a year, I think yeah, you are used to that, indeed, over a year for it to put on uh, maybe a kilo and a half or so of meat. Wow. Uh, so, and then when you look at the improved one, you're talking of uh, 13 weeks. Of so of course, if uh, you have a breed that will give you uh, two and a half kilos, right. like in 13 weeks, I think you're better off. And of then course. Uh, that uh, supports uh, his uh, investment at the end of Definitely. the Definitely. Yeah. How important is it to then have these chickens separate? And how do we ensure that they are safe? 
uh, Mr. Mainga is building a new chicken house, a right. new home for the beds, that the new business. Mm -hmm. He might need to confine them. Mm -hmm. But then for, for now, he might need to vaccinate them maybe every six with, weeks mm -hmm. with uh, some uh, new castle vaccine just of to course. keep the disease causing organisms at bay and ensure that there is no circulating virus on the farm. It is sounding good. I don't know if I should also ask on the, uh, how much is this day or chick? Yeah, and then he, when, when I've grown them, they will start laying eggs. Will I be able to, to hatch those, those eggs myself? Yes, they can uh, produce fertile eggs, but you do not uh, use a male that is within the, right. the group. You have to bring an external male right. to, to fertilize so that you, you break the issue of uh, inbreeding there. Right, for quality assurance. Quality assurance, and so consistency. And of course the price? The price of the day-old chick is 10 kwacha. Okay. It's quite affordable. Fantastic. It's just 10 kwacha per chick. Is there a sort of support system or structure that hybrid has? Uh, we offer free technical support for right. all those that buy our product. So of course uh, we we'll work through with the farmer uh, from placement up to the time maybe of slaughter. They become part of the hybrid family like we say. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. So you never walk alone. Technical support is always free uh, from fantastic. hybrid. Thank you very much, Mr. Luca. Very, very, very useful information. Hybrid chicken supply three types of improved chicken. A commercial layer for eggs. This takes 18 weeks to the point of lay with overall production at around 360 eggs after 80 weeks. A broiler is for meat. It takes just six weeks until it's ready for market with a weight of one and a half to two kilos. A village chicken is free range. If reared for meat, it can be ready in 14 weeks and can be fed organic food for a tastier flesh. These birds can reach a weight of two and a half kilos. I was really yearning to get that kind of information because I seriously want to go into uh, poultry production. It will not be uh, very expensive for me uh, because I also grow maize and I also grow soybeans. So somehow I would be able to make my own feed. So it will, it, profit will be very good for me. Controlling pests is a major skill for any farmer. Not only can pests ruin a crop, but using pesticides can be expensive and dangerous to use if guidelines are not followed correctly. So meet Tinongwe Gondwe from the Ministry of Agriculture. She is an expert in integrated pest management, a cheaper and less damaging way to control pests on the farm. Mr. Mainga, what are the pests that you have been battling with on your fields? So for field crops uh, like maize, the infamous, so to say, for armyworm. For armyworm. Yes. When it comes to the hot culture pro products here, we face the, the very aphids, the white flies, mm. and also the, the leaf miners mm. and the bollworms. What can we do to help Mr. Mainga? Uh, I would advise Mr. Mainga to adopt an integrated pest management approach. It looks at three key issues. That is prevention where you, have, you try to prevent the crop from being attacked by the pest itself. Then monitoring, that is where you have the pests present, so you monitor the populations, because there are certain populations where you, you can see this is really minimal, so it's not economical for you to go in there and start spraying. Then now the intervention, this is where now you actually go in with your control measures in reducing the pest population. So when we look at the interventions, there are different methods that we use. There's the cultural, we have the biological, mechanical, as well as the chemical, which is the last resort. Can you give us some examples of these biological controls? For instance, the ladybug, ladybird bug. Mm. Yes, that one can be used in controlling aphids in the field. Mm. So it will go in the crop and feed on the aphids. So mm. that will reduce the population. What kind of plant would attract the ladybird bug? flowers, the coriander or the lavender. You can plant them, say, just around or near your homestead, you have them, so that you increase the populations of the ladybugs. Mm. Yes. Any other forms of uh, IPM? 
for the mechanical one. Mm -hmm. Mechanical one is uh, basically where you try to create barriers. Say you have a small field mm. of maize, like the 4 armyworm. If it's really small, you can actually go there, you check inside, you can easily crush yeah. it. Okay. It's not practical for one to use it on a big field. So mm -hmm. if okay. your field is small, you can do that to avoid spraying. And then we come to the last resort, which is the chemical. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are these chemicals that are more toxic than others. Okay. How yeah. can a person know that this is too toxic for a human? It has a coding, a color coding. So when you have the red one, mm -hmm. those are highly toxic and those are banned. Then we have the blue one. Okay. Blue one is toxic but no, but it's not banned it's still available mm. so you need to be you need to take caution when okay. you're using these ones okay then we have the green one the toxicity levels are really minimal mm -hmm. so mostly for the green ones we have the bio pesticides mm. so these are basically the pesticides that have been made using plant extracts mm. now i'm wondering can somebody make their own homemade bio pesticides from plants around maybe some can be made using chilies, garlic, okay. and onion you can make, as well as the common trees like the neem tree and the tephrosia. That's interesting. Mr. Manga, have you ever used the biopesticide before? No, I've, 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 I've never used any, but of course I would like to learn. Please, Tiwonge, <laughs> explain to us how we can make a biopesticide from the home, especially from neem tree, since he has that. You can use the leaves, two cages of the leaves. Mm -hmm. You dry them, maybe in the shed, Okay. Once it dries, then you can soak it in 10 liters of water mm -hmm. overnight and then it's ready to spray. Oh, sure. Amazing. So what does it uh, work against? Aphids? We have the aphids, white flies, it will work towards that. Oh, how much money do you think we're going to save if we use neem tree? A lot of money. I, I may not even be required to buy any... <laughs> any 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 chemicals because those are your, your your worst enemies and yes. you have the tree in the house in the homestead yes amazing a number so of trees. coupled with the other practices that we've talked about i think that's something that we can look into mm. the pesticide made out of a new tree can be used on aphids on white flies on the even the four army worm and the many many other insecticides so i said no, this one is a plus for me it is very good <laughs> Hey, Katanana. How's it going? Ah, I'm not just winging it anymore. Mm. Pretty skillful village chicken farmer. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so stay with us as we come down to land and I find out how to save money using fertilizers. While well, I'm going to fly off looking for markets. So, no time to waste. We'll see you later. Making sure the soil has all the nutrients a plant needs to grow strong and healthy is a vital skill for any farmer. But the cost of fertilizer is expensive. How do we reduce the costs of feeding plants? We've invited Richard Chisenga from Yara Fertilizers to come and tell us all about it. What would you say were some of the main challenges that contributed to you only harvesting what you did? Apart from the challenges of the adverse weather conditions, uh, I also have had a challenge uh, on fertilizers. Basically on fertilizers, it's the cost of fertilizers which is too high. And then the other thing is uh, basically the, the knowledge, the lack of knowledge on, on how to go about fertilizing the crop. Right. Yes. Sure. So, it so all starts with understanding the soil. Of course. You know, that's where even the, the cost comes in. Okay. Most of the farmers have been complaining, so the, the cost of fertilizers is very high. Right. Why is it high? It's because most of the farmers, they apply more than what is necessary. We need to understand the condition of the soil, how much nutrients are there. Okay. So it is very important as Mr. Mainga to do what we call soil analysis because one, the farmer will know how much nutrients he should apply right. into the soil for him to get the desired yields. Right. Two, it reduces on the waste, the wastage. Sometimes you may apply more than necessary. Of course. Then the, the third one is 
you know how much you should apply in there, which means you may not under feed your crop. Of course. Sometimes because of this issue of cost, right. many farmers tend to reduce the on the amount right. of fertilizer that they put. Okay. Now, if you've got the results, they will tell you the specific amount of uh, fertilizer should apply in okay. the soil. Who does the testing? Yeah, we have a department at our office which deals with that. Mm -hmm. We can show you Aziara. how to take, yes, at Yara, we can show you how to take the samples. Mm -hmm. When you take the samples, bring them to our office or you leave them at one of our agro dealers. We pick okay. them from there. We see, we, then uh, in a few weeks time, we'll be able to receive the results. Okay, so a soil test should be the first step to reducing fertilizer costs. But how else can farmers save money? You know, when a crop like uh, maize, you plant your maize, it will not take all the nitrogen at once. Right. It will be taking that nitrogen uh, over a period of time. Slowly over slowly, time. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Mm. Now, most of the farmers, they apply all the nitrogen at once and they forget. Mm. Your mares will just get a bit of it. The rest will be leached down beyond the root zone. Others will be evaporated. The other, others will be washed away. Right. The cost comes in. Course. So the farmers, most of them, they don't know about that. Right. At Yara, we encourage the farmers to do what we call split application. Split application. Yeah, the first uh, dose of application, you do it maybe around um, four to five weeks. Mm -hmm. You apply the, the first application, then another, you give it another one month, you apply another application. Mm -hmm. By that, you're going to have a good, good crop. You're going to have a good yield. You're going to have a good cob. And when would be the right time for the farmer to apply the fertilizer to reduce wastage? For, for, for the top dressing fertilizers, you apply immediately after the rains. So that is the best time of applying your nitrogen. Thank you very much, Mr. Richard. Thank you. So there you have it, farmers, fertilizer. So a few things that you have to remember to ensure that you get the best results from your fertilizers. Number one always do a soil test by understanding what components are in your soil and what might be lacking you will definitely have a better understanding of what fertilizers you will need to get the best results and secondly correct usage of fertilizer to know how much quantity you need to apply and when so that you ensure you get the best harvest and save a bit of money you have done all the hard work and now you have produce to sell but finding the markets can be a problem right chasing around looking for buyers but what if you could do all that hard work right from your farm David Mulenga from Lima Links can not only help with finding markets he can help farmers plan with crops to plant as well it all comes down to understanding the market. Mr. Mainga, have you ever had a situation where you take your crop to the markets and discover that uh, it's over flooded with the same crop and made a big loss uh, from that? Yes, I've had uh, several of those situations, mm. yes. Several? Several, yes. Oh my gosh. How do you plan that this is the time to go to the markets? So when the crop is ready for market and then we just deliver it, Unfortunately, many times you just find that the market is saturated mm. and then you end up just losing just, 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 just everything. Mm. Yeah, you mm. don't even recover maybe even the, 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 your transport monies. Mm. Yeah. David, how can you advise farmers to solve this challenge? We can use Lima Links. Currently, it's just on Airtel Network. It's an agri-tech company mm -hmm. that small-scale farmers uses mm. to access market information, like mm -hmm. Mr. Michael Mainga here. You'll be able to know what the price of, uh, maybe for example, watermelon in Kabwe, Copper Belt, Lusaka, well, it's here. That's how oh, Lima Links wow. works. That's interesting. Does it make sense? Let's break it down in the details. 
Lima Lynx is a USSD service that works on any mobile phone and is totally free of charge. By dialing star 789 hash, farmers can access market prices for farm produce and even input costs too. And did I say it was free? Well, there's no charge, so you can use it as often as you like. Uh, Mr. Maiga, you are quite an experienced farmer. Have you uh, come across this Lima Lynx before? Yes, I've, uh, I've used the Lima Lynx for a year ah, now. Yes. Okay, tell me about your experience so far. Yeah, from the time that I've, uh, I've started using Lima Lynx, mm -hmm. we've managed now to start uh, studying the, the trends of the market. Okay. And we know exactly when we should grow what, so mm. that we know when, we, when to sell it. Mm. We know when the, the demand will be high for that particular product and when the supply will be low. And you are now using it for planning as well, right? Yes, I'm using it for planning. In fact, it's, it's, it's helping a lot. Mm. Because sometimes what we do is we don't even deliver our crop to mm. the market per se. Mm. People that will sell for us there. Mm. Yes. Mm. And then after selling, they'll send the money via mobile. Mm, mobile money. Yeah. When was the last time you, you saw the crop? Just last week. Okay. I had a crop of uh, watermelon. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. okay. So I had to find out what was the trend at the market, what was the prices like. After mm. knowing the prices, then we organized for transport. Somebody came to pick from here mm. and then took the, 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 the product to the market. And you so could sleep? In Lusaka. We just slept here uh, and, and when they were done, <laughs> yes. money was sent. Nice. So you nice. see? Most of the farmers, you find that they'll have the crop uh, towards the end of this month and mm -hmm. the market will start flooding. But him already sold and he made a better profit than those that are, are producing in the next maybe three, four weeks. Um, what about uh, storage? Can that be a strategy you use? Okay, yeah, sure. Definitely there are certain crops that uh, a farmer can grow mm -hmm. and be able to store and sell later. Mm -hmm. Like if you're able to check on Lima Links, you know the prices, you can store to say, okay, during that period, the price will be better. So let mm. me store this crop and sell it later. Right now I have something stored there. Okay. Yes, I have maize that, that I have stored in that, in that, in that barn there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, waiting for markets for the market to open up to get better. Ah, yes, okay. I also have uh, sunflower, okay. mm -hmm. which is equally stored there waiting for the market to get better, and popcorn mm. Mm. is okay. all stored because right now the market is not it's so saturated. good. It's saturated, yes. yes. Okay, uh, Mr. Mainga, what has been your experience using Lima Leaks and would you advise other farmers to use it? Yeah, my experience with uh, Lima Leaks has been very good. Mm. You plan properly. Just starting from the time when you want to plant, and when it comes to time of selling, you will you will know yes. uh, how the market is. Well, David, thank you very much for coming over and sharing more about Lima Links, and I think we are going to have more profits, especially now that we're even planning ahead. Exactly. Yeah. yeah sure. Thank you so much. Remember, farmers, to access Lima Links, dial star seven eight nine hash. <laughs> Mr. Mainga, we really enjoyed the visit to your farm. Did you enjoy us being here with you? Uh, I've liked the time that you've been with me here. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wish you could have stayed oh. a little longer. Oh, <laughs> what was your favorite part? Yeah, basically the village chicken. Ah, yeah. Yeah, right. no more winging it, right? No more winging it. I think <laughs> I really enjoyed that bit as well. So with that being said, what can we expect to find when we visit you next time? Yeah, when we visit next time, Oh, definitely you will find the chicken run mm -hmm. and the chicken there mm -hmm. growing. Mm -hmm. Definitely mm -hmm. that one I have to just implement. <laughs> <laughs> These things that I've gotten from the experts, I would really want to share with the, the other farmers. It's so, it's so important. We want to grow together. Also a lead farmer in this, in this area. So people would want to learn from me. There are so many people that want to learn from me. So we want to just uh, grow together. So that's all we have time for this week. We'll see you next week on another episode of... Munda Makeover! Makeover.